Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at peeling a cube. I know, this is probably not geometry that you've been like, oh, how do I model this? But the fact of the matter is we like to do these examples of modeling odd geometry, not necessarily because you need this specific set a geometry in your model somewhere. I, I mean, maybe, maybe you model a lot of post-its and you've always needed to put this into your model. But the idea here is that we model in new ways using new tools or tools in new ways so that you get an idea of how to model something you've never thought about before. So rather than jumping to an extension or going finding something and importing it, modeling outside the box that's a joke because we're gonna start with the cube. Modeling outside the box gives you skills to model stuff you didn't know you were able to model before. So I'm done explaining it. Let's go ahead and hop in and uh, you're gonna learn, even if you don't have to model this exact geometry, I think you might learn a couple tricks. Let's hop in. Okay, so this thing, wh what this is, is I started with a cube, a 10 foot by 10 foot cube, and then I made slices, I think it was every four inches or so, and then each slice came down one foot less. So this first slice came down nine feet, this one's eight feet, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and this last cut right here is only one foot. And then each one was consecutively just kind of rolled out. You can see they're not, they're not even, they're kind of like kind of organic looking. They don't all go out at the exact same angle. Um, that was intentional. This is, this is kind of what I was looking for. It's just the idea of this, this geometry peeling back layer by layer. So let's take a look at how I did it real quick. We're gonna start with a rectangle. I'm gonna do the same dimensions here. I'm gonna say 10 foot by 10 foot. And then I'm gonna use push pull to pull it up another 10 foot. This is the cube I started with. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into this cube and take the cuts all the way out of it. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna go a little bigger than I did last time, I'm gonna go six inches. And then at six inches, I'm gonna drop down nine foot and then cut over. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna do two slices on this because the process is the same for each of these. So once I do it twice, you guys should understand how to do it and be good to do it on your own. Another line, six foot. This one's gonna come down eight foot and over. And now I'm just gonna take that geometry and erase it. Awesome. Now, one of the things I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to triple click and make this a group. Now, in the end, this is all one solid piece. So all of this is a single connected piece of geometry. I'm going to do this because as I start creating my geometry, I don't necessarily want to immediately weld with what's already back here. So I'm going to start by keeping this in a group and I'm going to put some curves on here. The first one is just going to come right off this line right here. So I'm going to say A to bring up my two point arc pull this straight across like this, oops, pull straight across and just kind of an arbitrary length. I'm just pulling it out somewhere and then I'm gonna draw a curve. I don't want a full half circle on this. Uh, I want something a little bit lower. So I'm gonna just do something like that. Yes, arbitrariness is happening. I'm just kind of sculpting in 3D right now. Now, one of the important things I want is I want this to look like it goes right here. So. If you look here, you can kind of imagine that length is about right where if it's straightened up, it would go to the top of the cube because it is. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. If I select an arc and look at entity info, it tells me this is seven foot 10 and a 16th of an inch. Now this, despite being able to highlight this value, you can't actually edit it. This is just a display value. What I can do is I can select this arc and use scale. And if I use a uniform scale handle and drag it, it will keep the arc I have, but make it bigger and give me a larger overall length. So what I wanna do is I wanna just kinda of nudge this up till it gets right about nine foot. So I'm gonna go just a touch under nine. Now I could play with this. I could go in and, and use my scale to type in 0 0.9, one, two, three, four, whatever, and try to get it as you know super close. Um, for me, getting it within an inch is okay, because this is not, I'm not gonna fabricate this or anything, but I do want it to look like it's the right length. And that's the way I could go about doing it. Like I said, you could probably, you know, nudge this scale at a thousandth or 10,000th of a percent or whatever to, to, to just kind of get it to the right spot. The other thing you can do is there's probably geometry. <laughs> I'm sure geometry factors in here somewhere where the length and the, the, the radius the bulge, you could figure out exactly how to scale it at a specific dimension. Uh, for me, close enough is good enough on this one. 
I'm going to take that then and use rotate to kind of rotate it up. The reason I'm doing this afterwards is, you know, let's see if I hit scale now, I don't have that same uh, even, uh, I'm not scaling straight out like I was before. It, I don't know that it makes a big difference, but for me, it was easier to scale it first, get to right length, and then put it in the direction I wanted to see it. All right, that looks good. So I, I have it so it's just peeling back right here at the beginning. Now I got to give this some length. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to grab the line. I'm going to use offset. I'm going to offset from the end to here. Now, I want to show you what happens. I'm going to zoom in here tight. Look what happens here when I do that. So this is in line, but you can see it's not quite touching. So this happens a lot when you offset single lines. If you offset a line that's on a face, you're much less likely to get this because the edge will stay connected. In this case, I don't actually have it running out. So along the arc, as it projects out, it kind of projects out a little bit above that point. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna undo that. There's a couple things I could do. I could create a solid face here and then offset it and then erase the geometry afterwards. I'm okay with going with a simpler solution. So I'm gonna draw a line over here because this line's in the group, and I'm gonna draw a line straight up. Now, if I take this, offset it from that line, and pull it out here to this line, look what happens. All right, so it still didn't come across, but because I had this vertical line here, I can delete these two pieces, and I have a line that goes from the corner all the way up. Draw one more line right here, and it closed that face. See that? All right, so I'm gonna grab that, Right now, this is still in a group, so I'm gonna go ahead and just explode it. When I explode it, this all heals up. I can push pull this down here like this. Awesome. And then erase here, smoothen, erase. Oh yeah, that's what I'm looking for. All right, so I wanna get one more on here. Same process, but I'm gonna do the same, something similar as I did last time. I'm gonna grab all of this, make it a group. And again, this is even more important on the second section because I could try to kind of hover up here and figure out where this is going to go when it folds over, or I can just come, you know, straight out. So I'll probably do that. I'll probably just click here, click over here, and then, you know, on the blue axis vertically, I'll hit the up arrow key so I lock that vertical axis, just get an arc that looks a little less than that other, the previous one. And then same thing, eight foot here for this guy, right? Here up to here is eight feet. So I'll do the same thing. I'll scale, scale up a touch, a touch and a half, a touch and three quarters. Oop, bring it back a little bit. And if I zoom in uh, tighter, I'm gonna get higher fidelity with my scale. So if I come in here like this and get these teeny little movements, all right, seven, 11 and three quarters, good. I'll do the same thing. I'll rotate that up. So again, so it looks like it's just peeling away from the block like that, awesome. Same thing, uh, because I'm offsetting a line and not a face, I wanna make sure I get a clean connection here. So I'm gonna offset this from here to here. Delete, whoops, sorry about that. Delete my extra geometry here and here. And that should come down right to the corner. Oop, I got a little bit of extra for that. All right, looks good. Connect these two together. Nice, I explode this. Take this all the way across, erase, smooth, and we got a couple, couple pieces going. New cube getting peeled. But there you go. Quick, easy, native tools only, and uh, a pretty cool view or, or look of things in the end. Again, it's a cool thing. It's something you may never actually have to do. You might not ever have to create one of these. But a couple things I wanted to take away there. One is scaling a, a curve so that it's about the, the right size. Again, this is all kind of quick modeling. Uh, the other thing is if you do offset those lines, remember something like a curve, it's going to offset perpendicular to itself, which may not actually perfectly line up with that end line. So that's what happened there. If our end line had been perpendicular at the end, that offset would have been good, but since our, our line was kind of curved over when we offset it, it didn't exactly line up with the corner we were going to, thus the vertical line. Let me know what you think of this. Do you like these kind of models where we just kind of go in and model stuff and, and, and give you tips along the way? Would you prefer some other specific workflows? We're all open to ideas here. If you like this video, go click like down below, and if you haven't already, please do subscribe. 
We create several videos each and every week around here, and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, please do leave us a comment. Like I said, we like making these videos. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.